It's a mechanic that many of us take for granted as it's become a basic member of our survival kits, I suppose. Mob blocking. But I've been wondering about just how well known all this is. Does the average player actually realize that even big bads can be stopped in their tracks? I mean, I've certainly mentioned it in passing, but perhaps a dedicated showcase is in order. Especially when folk need to know that what I just said is only true if we keep aggros up. And how certain bosses like Berger, Claws, the Flyers, and one or two more won't exactly follow the same rules as others. In short, what's to come is not all foolproof at the end of the day. That said, it's still all shockingly easy to access, even for beginners. Take the classic fossil fragment formations here that one could build, for example. Drop by both types of stalagmites down in the caves at 10% each smashing. They are easily one of the most versatile options here as well, just due to their portability. Consider how Spalagmites drop 1 to 2 fossil fragments guaranteed, and they're also pretty darn easy to amass at that. They're just limited beyond some bone armor deconstructions if you don't have any more Stalagmites mined, so be aware of that. Next on my list of availability, however, are end tables. Player built structures that are essentially indestructible to anything but the aforementioned bosses from before. Also super easy to come by via a hammer and the stagehand here, the biggest investment will look to be marble, just given how turf is created nowadays, but even marble is in and of itself farmable, so there you go. And don't forget that you can also just mix and match all this crap too, folks. In fact, that's what we all do for the most part, even with the easy to handle statues here. Now some of you may be questioning why I put end tables over all these things considering how simple it is to have either moon glass, cut stone, and marble at the ready per sculpture, and how two sculptures are available immediately, with lots and lots more to come very soon, mind. However, it's the act of always needing to move both them and another potter's wheel to where we want to build that ever so slightly presents an annoyance. Still, please note that statues are so, so good for all this regardless, maybe even the main thing. But now we enter the plausible, yet very lesser known options like cave-in boulders here. Heck, some of you might not even know of their existence if you haven't spent much time in the caves, as the only way to find them is through an Antlion's enraged earthquake, or the connection between the Lunar Grotto and the Ancient Archive here. Now they'll work, yes, but holy will it be back-breaking work to get them to where you want them for sure. And in fact, that's going to be the common theme for the remainders of these, everybody. Take the wholly unknown glass sculptures of Antlion herself. They too will block stuff, surprisingly, but they're only obtainable via the Antlion fight in summer, so there's that. Plus, we can truly only make them near the end of the fight, as doing so during it is going to result in most of them just shattering right before our eyes. Also, you're gonna need some fire along the way. Yeah, not ideal, but how about impassable walls that we can grow ourselves, everyone? Yes, indeed. Any and all giant crops, included rotten ones, can be substituted where needed, so bear that in mind, I guess. If you have farmed something you don't like, use it like this. Knobbly tree nuts are a sneaky solution themselves, albeit an involved one, is not only must we ram into the three separate great tree trunks of our three waterlogged biomes found somewhere out there in the oceans in order to even spawn them, we must also have a pinching winch at the ready to thus retrieve and move them to where we desire. So again, even more painstaking work, honestly, and it's not worth it. But here's an interesting one, potato sacks. Now I'd be willing to bet that some of you out there don't even know of their existence, and that's likely due to never seeing a wolf gang truly build their exclusive mighty gym here. They are pretty darn cheap too, and each gym offers two quote-unquote free potato sacks each, so you know, they actually ain't that bad as an option. Perhaps I treated them too harshly. To continue, believe it or not, ocean trawlers also find their way onto this list, however they truly only work for the pirate raids and or waterlogged mobs out there in the world, so I personally wouldn't bother. And finally, lure plants. And no, not kidding. Even lure plants have a say in this shindig, even if it's an exclusive situation or two. For you see, with a bit of help and know-how, lure plants can indeed block toadstool for the zero attacks cheese here, and even fuel weaver for the quote-unquote out-of-bounds shootout method. Now all this, all this is kind of what this video was really meant for. As yes, it is both likely known and well assumed now that blocking mobs and bosses is a bloody good thing, and even if you're new, I bet you're already thinking of what to do with all this. 
Some ideas being better than others, of course. Work the mechanic into all sorts of mob farms or boss arenas out there, and you'll not only be safe, but you'll be all the richer for it at that. Seriously, people, it's truly not rocket science. You have the idea in your head now. So use it as your own. As there you have everyone, quote unquote, all the ways to quote unquote, permanently block both mobs and bosses within Don't Starve Together. Not only that though, I hope this showcase also served to show you a plethora of new builds, sculptures, items, and more along the way. Just keep in mind the boss aggro thing, and which bit bads don't actually care about no impassable walls, of course, and you'll be golden. But thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish it to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.